Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, which goes by the name Real-Time Daily Trading Ideas. This is our internationally oriented webinar addressed to traders all over the world. We will be speaking about trading ideas, strategies, market screenings, and will be answering your questions. At this point, I would like to introduce myself to the audience. My name is Alex Raftopoulos and I'm the new employee of Admiral Markets in Berlin. Before we can start with the actual webinar, we will briefly present the risk disclaimer. Trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carries a high level of risk, which is not suitable for all investors due to its complex nature. Please make yourself familiar with these instruments by using a demo account if you are a starter. Please feel free to contact us if you need any assistance with that. Please also note that none of this is investment advice. The statements made in this webinar only represent the personal opinion of our traders. You can also find the whole risk disclaimer on our website. Here you can see the schedule for the week. Today it's Dirk's turn. And before I finish off with the introduction, I would like to invite everyone interested in trading to try us out and benefit from the best index and forex offerings with spreads of just 0.8 pips. Please feel free to have a look around our website and explore our international activities and do not hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. Well, enough of me for the moment, now it's Dirk's turn. Good morning Dirk, what's your outlook of the markets for the moment? Yes, good morning Alex. Good morning. Hope you're doing good. Um, I'm just wait for the transmitting of the screen. Okay. Yes, it's done. All right. Yeah, let's start. In, in, in my case, it's my last trading day um, this, this year. Um, of course, um, it is allowed to trade uh, until the rest of the year. It depends what kind of markets you are up to. Um, you should be aware that a couple of markets will be closed in the next days. So um, just try to check out which market is, is affected for you and um, just check out if, if there is anything um, you might be aware of um, closing markets in the US, closing markets in the uh, European area or even in the Asian Pacific area. So um, first of all, before you start trading and start open positions uh, in the next days, just make sure that you might be uh, exi exiting in, in the next days uh, as well and uh, that this is possible possible. So um, um, for the first um, few seconds, let, let us just check out um, which kind of markets could be uh, could be interesting um, for you guys in the next uh, days uh, in uh, regarding the fact that they are closed. So most important markets here, uh, US, UK, France, uh, Germany, Italy, um, Spain or Swiss, um, the, uh, they are all closed. And why are um, are they on my list? Because these are the major, um, yeah, let's say, Western um, markets. And uh, if you just combine the US and UK, and just mark that blue here right now, if you just combine these two countries, they are approximately 65 to 70 percent responsible for the worldwide uh, forex um, um, yeah, daily daily turnovers. So um, if these two markets are closed, and you can imagine that there is not too much liquidity out there, and uh, the, the less liquidity you will find, um, the more it maybe is getting dangerous in a couple of pairs to trade. So be aware that these uh, kind of facts are still there and they won't, and they will be there. And markets like Japan, China, Russia, they are open um, during during Christmas, and um, um, if you're if you're trading in, in in kind of these these directions, okay, it might be okay, but um, just um, in only a few days. 2018 is gone. Okay, before we start into the Zetra DAX, uh, into the DAX analysis, I just prepared you guys um, a couple of those. Um, let's just check that way. Check that out if this is correct. The resistances and and and, and supports and the pivot point and uh, the so-called EMAs, so expan exponential moving averages. So you see that there um, are a couple of um, let's say support um, uh, lines right here, 10554. Uh, and if you check out the current level of the uh, of the of the DAX, which is at 10539 right now, um, we are. Um, let's say hovering around these two markers here, and if you look at yesterday's future DAX close or future no not future DAX uh, close the future DAX low, uh, this was around uh, 10,482.50. So could be clo getting closer around that, 
um, a major effect today is so-called quadruple witching, which is taking place um, for, for German ducks, for example, at the uh, 13 CT today. So um, options, features, uh, single stock features and uh, options are, uh, are going to be expiring. So that is a major event. And uh, just in front of those major events, uh, of course, it, it's getting rough. And you saw the, the whole route the last days. Um, the ducks lost a couple of one, hundreds on po of points, but it's still, still in this week, still outperforming the, the Dow Jones even. So uh, anyway, um, these these kind of uh, techniques, we, will, we, we just will check out um, the current levels of today. And if you look at the, the daily chart, and uh, look at the a couple of gaps uh, to close from the ZDAX perspective. Um, still, as I say, in the German DAX looks like a Swiss cheese in the last days. Uh, a lot of gaps, uh, a lot of gaps open. Uh, the, the most important, uh, the most important one is you can um, on top see um, at the at the future stuff. You will see that one here. Let's just take the horizontal line and just mark it. Um, it's not it's not important to market exactly the most important thing is that there is still a gap and the, it's interesting that it might be getting closed in direction to these uh, 11 100 markers so in case of you got in case of that you are about to to buy to buy a, a really dramatic dip right now you should be aware that it uh, could be getting very bumpy uh, 100 150 50 points to the downside and getting back up in direction 10 8 10 600 10 700 10 800 today all possible all possible um in the long run in the long run um i i, I repeat that i repeat that what i'm i'm saying um from from january february on you can check that out in old webinars i always told you that uh, we are in a let's say in a changing mode, the the, mo the mode, the so-called mode changed from buy the fucking dip into sell the fucking rally. That's how traders, really traders, are talking about it. I don't like the F word, but um, they are using it everywhere. Uh, and so this kind of an attitude is changing. And everywhere where there's some something like a two or three days rally, they're going to sell it again. Uh, that's because of um, mounting risk and, of course, um, about... Um, federal federal funds rates hikes in the last in the last couple of months and even if you if you just remember on Wednesday where the Federal Reserve uh, pushed that pushed that rate up uh, two dot uh, to five percent uh, in direction two dot five zero percent so that's the new uh, federal funds rate um, uh, right now um, look at the current um, uh, let's say uh, markers from the German DAX and um, if you Check it out from the last perspective, very short term perspective. You, you have a low, the old low, and this um, old high here. We will be changing that to a four hour chart or possibly to a one hour chart and um, just squeeze it a little bit to get the right markers at the right positions. Um, and let's see um, at the so called projections to the downside here, where a couple of those uh, major targets for the bears are still. Um, um, hovering around. We will mark that with so-called shapes, blue shapes, trading boxes, like I always do that, between those 138.2 and 161.8 levels, where possible, a possible uh, dive could be a nice buy zone here. Uh, on, the, uh, on the upper side, you got the 61.8 level right here. Um, same um, show um, that you might be having uh, something like a bump uh, in direction up here uh, in the next maybe a next chance to, to short the market here. So that's in direction um, between, um, let's say, 10,740, uh, 10,750. So it could be it could be possible to do that with a pending order um, or um, simply due to the fact that you guys are sitting in front of your uh, platform um, just having a little bit more patience and, and trying to, to catch this just, uh, just uh, so-called bump up. Okay, so let's say uh, not only a bump up, it's a spike. Okay. Uh, the other way around, um, of, of course, if you look at the long-term chart, and I'm just showing you that because of a, a long-term, a long-term line, long-term trend line, and let's just check that one out as well. You got a couple of lows here, and just combine these kind of lows. Uh, those are um, already, already, let's say, kicked down the river. Um, then we got another one, marking that level from this kind of a low here. Let's see if that is the so-called 
8350 uh, low from um, October 2014. This was around a, a couple of major events when the markets um, have been sold heavily as well. So you got a couple of possible dips even even um, under the 10K marker. So it is not surprising if we see the, the German DAX dipping in the next weeks and months to come in direction 9, 9800 or 9700. It uh, won't be surprising um, in the long run. In the long run, there will be a little bit of a relief move. Um, so that is a possible in direction uh, back into the 11K markers. So that one is going back to the daily level right now. This one is going to be deleted here. And um, going back to this one hour chart and squeezing that one back to a better, what is happening right now? Okay. However, it's not working by itself. Maybe I just switched the button, I turned the buttons, whatever. <laughs> Um, um, however, these kind of markers are still valid. So you got the two blue trading boxes here, and um, you got the, the chances to to just buy to buy in direction of that zone of that last um, um, trading trading low of yesterday's future DAX at 10480s, uh, possibly a pending order with a long buy at 10 10490. Um, going in direction 10600. So that would be a long setup. Um, a short setup would be a short setup around um, an entry zone at 10720s uh, until 10740s in direction to 10600 back. Okay, so these are the two um, possibilities in a German DAX here. Um, going back to, yes, uh, to, to, to Friday's session, uh, the last Friday I just showed you guys that we have a Bund Future setup uh, short. I told you guys that it put possibly there is a short setup at 163.98. So, uh, in fact, if you check out this kind of a candle uh, from yesterday, um, you got the candle, uh, the high is 163.99. Um, directly, directly scratched that 61.8 level here, that Fibonacci, and um, went back down. So, target for this kind of a move could be um, a gap close or from uh, the changing of the contracts, possibly or um, as well, uh, interesting level um, in a direction 160, 80s, like we see it very close to that 38 or two Fibonacci retracement here as well. So these are um, just, uh, nothing is nothing like cheering about um, um, presented trades. It's just about uh, showing you guys that these kind of technicals are still wallet and still important. Uh, and most important for the future here, it's working very, very good. Looking at the currency pair, I spoke about the Looney, the US, US dollar versus the Canadian, and this one is uh, rocking up into the rest days, uh, the, re the, day, the rest days of uh, this uh, 2018, and it's possibly with thinner markets that we will scratch the 161.8 level. So um, be aware that this kind of uh, currency pair is easily scratching this 138.2, which is a possible first try of a short. So a possible first try um, is like tipping the toe into uh, the water just to find out if it's still uh, too cold or even too hot for you guys. So uh, you should be you should be trying out uh, not to pull in, into a, a bigger position and just be aware that you know you try it out with maybe a mini lot or two or three mini lots, and it should fit it should fit uh, to your trading account of, on top of that. Um, uh, don't don't uh, forget about risk and money management in every kind of a trade. Um, this um, kind of a level, I will mm, take this so-called shape, this trading box here as well, uh, might be um, a sell sell opportunity in this kind of a direction because um, longer term and short term Fibonacci retracements are, are building something like a so-called cluster. And uh, you see that cluster in this blue trading box here uh, between 161.8, 61.8, and 138.2. So possibly um, just having a little bit more patience or trying it with a, with a pending order um, uh, around that 136.98 short, um, marking that with a 50-point stop-loss scenario and uh, looking back to uh, getting getting back to 133.80s and uh, the longer term. Um, scenario in direction of the 61.8 level here, 131.52. That's uh, uh, an event for next for next year for the for the January and February 2019. Just because just because of um, 
the rate developments of the Bank of Canada. So it could be uh, it could be the the first another another hike scenario in direction in direction of February and until April. Um, that's what uh, the central banks and uh, that's what a couple of analysts and a couple of investment banks are telling us. Okay. One thing, um, your knock. I placed my stop loss um, uh, at the entry already, and I got kicked out. So this one is um, um, kicked out 61.8 level here. I told you guys that the neuro knock should be um, uh, still um, a nice, a nice short setup. Um, nothing has changed so far with that sentence, with that kind of a sentence. Um, in, um, if you if you are stopped out at the at the entry level, you don't lose anything. So um, next chance, uh, it's it's a nice spike up here, and it's getting back to that to that uh, level of um, that old high here from uh, December 2017. And um, a nice nice uh, nice example just to 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 explain that how the the forex market um, could be could be working in the, into the rest of a year, because um, all these kind of currency pairs, let's say like Euro knock or Euro Swedish Kron or Euro Polish Slotty or Euro Czech Kron or something like that, are not big currency pairs. And the thinner the liquidity gets, uh, the most interesting it gets when spikes occur. So you might be having a chance uh, waiting um, or, or, or taking a first a first possibility here to to uh, to get into a really cheap short. Um, the stop loss level is um, definitely um, above 10. So if you are working with that um, and if you're interested in that kind of a currency pair, you should be aware that you should be um, yeah, checking out a stop loss level in direction 10, 10, 15, something like that. Okay. One um, most important pair, oh, not not pair. One of the most important commodity is um, Brent, or let's say WTI. Those both two major oil contracts. And um, if you if you look at oil, if you look at oil, you need to look at oil on top of that. How it is affecting affecting um, things like inflation, and the uh, the more the price of oil is, yeah, let's say dumping. Uh, the more it has an effect on the inflation inflation expecta expectations and just uh, just, ha just have a look at this long term uh, at this long term brand uh, chart there's a weekly chart here and uh, just let's let's just draw some lines and if you see that is the high the year high of 2018 which is around 86 to 87 uh, US dollars a barrel and it now it, it really yeah rocked down this road down to this current level of um, almost 54. So you, this is this is uh, more way more than 30 bucks uh, a barrel, and um, you can imagine that um, a drop like 30 bucks a barrel in in between two and three months has a, a deep in, a impact on on inflation and on inflation expectations, and um, the more this drop remains in place. Uh, the more effects it will have on inflation because energy prices are having a huge impact. And um, if you go if you go just out and check out the the prices at the fuel stations, or check out the the levels of oil you pay for for heating up or whatever, it uh, everything dropped like that. And this has an effect uh, on on inflation to the next weeks and months to come. So it's not immediately; it's having an effect uh, like like two or three months or further down the road. Um, what I'm saying is that it will have an effect on the the federal rate decisions into the next month to come as well. Uh, the most important the most important fact is that the the more this this kind of uh, um, oil oil price level remains in place, the more the Federal Reserve um, has really really hard to explain why why they are hiking um, so that might be we might be having a, a less 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 than three hikes next year in 2019 um, I would say it would be something between one and two hikes in 2019 if that kind of a play uh, stays the same right this like this um, price price around here and um, while we are while we are just um, yeah, having this kind of an analysis, um, the price of Brent is still dropping. Where could it go? So we possibly draw some lines with the Fibonacci in the long term, and um, of course um, having having some kind of these Fibonacci setups and just mark 
delete this kind of a trend line here, this trend, uh, this horizontal line, and um, we'll just move that um, Fibonacci retracements to a couple of lows. If you see that uh, low here from um, April in direction, in direction May 2017, you got a scratch of the 23.6 level right now. If you're going back to a couple of these um, other lines here, um, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. The other way around, of course. We need that um, as a zero point here. The high is the zero point. And now we are checking that one out. My mistake, my thought. Okay. So that that is uh, the 61.8 level I was talking about. And this one got scratched down. And um, now you're checking out all the levels and um, the uh, low, the very low. Um, and just check that out. That is the price level of um, January 2016, uh, around a low with 27.52. And now we are getting very close in a long-term chart. We are getting very close to that 61.8 level here, which uh, better be holding. Which should better be holding because um, uh, otherwise, all these kind of oil companies and not only oil companies, and on top of that banks who are having a huge exposure in financing all these kind of oil companies, um, they should be, yeah, let's say they should be happy when the oil price is turning and is getting back up um, because otherwise their house of cards with financing will be collapsing and uh, this would have an effect on the rest of the market as well. May I quickly so, interrupt you, Dirk? Yes, of course. There is a question incoming from Mr. Darshan yeah. Patel. And he's yes. asking, when would you say is a good buy on oil? Yeah, that's what I'm explaining right now. Just from mm -hmm. the chart technical perspective, of course, um, when it's getting very close to that 61.8 level here, um, um, I will mark that with a with a horizontal line, of course. Um, just from the long term perspective, um, looking at a so-called swing, so it's pretty much very close to that 50 level here. So around that 50 level, um, the uh, old you, the old long term, um, let's say uh, other lows here, you can see that in the chart are between 44 and um, a couple of those um, between um, 44 and 46. So that would be a next drop, of course. But in the long in the long run, it would make sense uh, to try that first uh, at the at the 50 at the 50 um, US dollar marker. Um, of course. Um, not only chart technical stuff, um, um, besides the fact that you look at chart technical perspectives and, and chart technical analysis, you might uh, on top of that check out the, the um, um, options and then the, the so-called COT report every Friday, which is important not only for the brand, but uh, on top of that most important for the uh, West Texas Intermediate as well, so the other oil contract. Um, and on top of that, of course, you should be um, checking out the next meetings. Um, let's say, if, let's see, uh, let's just talk about uh, OPEC quickly, because uh, um, they, they they shortly um, agreed on a on a production cut, and um, um, you you already uh, already see that's not enough. So they might be meeting in the next in the next uh, in the first quarter of 2019 um, on top. And might be um, yeah, let's say talk about a next production cut because uh, otherwise. The market is just, yeah, uh, falling apart. They, 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 they definitely need to do something to just get this, uh, get this uh, commodity back up the road. All right. If there are still some questions, of course, uh, post questions or just write questions uh, in the into the window, and um, I will be checking out another market here. Um, which we spoke about the last weeks um, and every time, um, all these. All these kind of uh, older chart technical analyzers here is still valid because these uh, kind of levels I spoke about the last weeks, they are now uh, getting definitely tested. And I spoke about the uh, the gold long uh, the last two weeks especially. And um, in fact, in fact, these levels uh, these levels uh, are yeah already got tested. And so, if you have been still long or if you have been into into that uh, kind of uh, long setup. The uh, major target to the upside is not yet tested, but uh, the first uh, bigger target at around 1,260s is already done. So that's history, as you can see from yesterday's major candle here. 
rocketing up to 1266. And um, the target was the 161.8 level here at 1272, 1273. So what is taking place in the next weeks uh, to come? It is very important to say, check out the kind of, uh, yeah, let's say, actual political developments in the U.S. Um, I'm not talking about that um, the defense minister Mathis is about to leave. I'm not talking about uh, a couple of um, things like they, they just uh, skip that troops and getting getting them back from Syria or, or even, even from Afghanistan the next month to come. All these kind of decisions are still still out there, but I'm, I'm especially, especially talking about this kind of a shutdown scenario, which is um, emerging every time Mr. Trump, for example, tries to get his wall and uh, the, the rest of the US uh, politicians don't want it. I'm, I'm, I'm on top of that speaking about the shut, shutdown scenario just because of one scenario because um, that uh, debt ceiling, that debt ceiling got suspended for um, uh, until until March 2019, and this kind of a problem of the U.S. debt is still there. So, as long as it's there, and it will be there in 2019, of course, it's not disappearing. Um, it will be, yeah, let's say a major a major effect for a, a longer term gold setup to the upside. So, the more the problems are getting closer in kind of uh, U.S. debt ceiling in March, uh, the more uh, the, the price of gold might be going back up in directions of this 1270s, in directions of this um, 1300s marker. So just saying. Okay, um, it's 11.27, of course. I don't want to forget to thank you guys for a, a really interesting year. And um, <clears throat> of course, this kind of a webinar is um, recorded and will be available at the YouTube channel in a couple of hours, possibly. And um, uh, I wish you guys, I wish you guys a really nice Christmas. Um, and of, on top of that, um, a safe, a safe slide into a fantastic 2019. Be healthy, be lucky, and uh, hopefully, I will hear you guys in the next year to come. I'm maybe Alex. You're just telling you telling you us. Um, I forgot the date. The next webinar will be taking place at the fourth of, uh, of January or eleven. I'm not sure about it. Right now, I'm not sure either. But uh, there will be, <laughs> okay. there, <laughs> exactly, there will be emails though that will notify the clients exactly. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm I'm almost I'm almost finished. My it's my it's my last training day today. I won't be doing anything between the years. Um, so so hopefully hopefully you the 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 one and um and, and other trade scenario is perfect for you guys. And um, yeah, let's 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 say it that way. <laughs> Don't shed a couple of pips in front of Christmas. Uh, otherwise, you're crying under the Christmas tree. Uh, uh, won't be won't be perfect for you then. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your comprehensive, comprehensive analysis, Dirk. Thanks to the audience for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. If you did enjoy it and would like to review it, as Dirk said, you can do, you can do so any time. Just give us an hour or so to upload it onto YouTube. I'm wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and looking forward to the next webinars with you. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>